I hope that by now you have spent quite some time exploring the possibilities of the A minor pentatonic scale on the simple A minor to D7 progression of backing track number 5. You may remember, however, that I said that although the A pentatonic is your first instinctive choice on a Santana-like progression like this, it is actually not your best choice in a jazz context. Yes, as your experiments show, it does work somehow, but you're limited in what you can do. It works harmonically because it's basically a reduced version of the A natural minor scale you would be expected to play. If you were to use the full A natural minor scale, however, there's one note that really clashes. Anyhow, instead of confusing you with more theory and intervals, I will tell you what really works, and therefore what you should use by default in a jazz setting. To demonstrate things in practice, we will use backing track number 6, which is an extended version of the previous one. Whilst the Santana progression is a 2-5 moving between the second degree of a major harmony, which is a minor 7 chord, and the fifth degree, which is a dominant 7 chord, back in track number 6 features the single most important progression in the entire jazz style. We call it 2-5-1. 2, five, one. two minor 7, 5 dominant 7, and we resolve to the major. Two, five, one. Resolving the tension generated by the first two chords really helps us realize that we indeed are in the key of G major. See how the music f naturally flows towards the res resolution. Minor to seven, relaxation into the uh, major seven chord. Having now firmly established that we're in the key of G major, what scale would you use to improvise over a G major progression? Of course, your first choice would be the G major scale. Earlier in the course, I've shown you two possible fingerings for the major scale, one with the root on the bottom E string and one with the root on the A string, the second string. If you've not mastered them yet, please refer to the PDF booklet and revise them now, in particular the one with the root on the bottom E string. As you feel your way around using the G major scale, remember that you have two basic techniques at your disposal. First, use the scale tones. Always better starting with small fragments of the scale, combining the notes in different ways and then expanding higher and lower. second basic technique is using arpeggios. The notes are not any different since an arpeggio of the G major chord obviously contains the same notes as a G major scale. Only when you do arpeggios you skip some of the notes of the scale and only play the notes of the chord, typically root, third, fifth and seven. Here's an, another arpeggio lick that you may want to learn and then expand upon.
So please now use backing track number 6 and spend some time experimenting with the G major scale, the G major arpeggios, the little arpeggio lick I've shown you. Then I strongly advise you to look for more backing tracks on YouTube. Search for 251 backing track and you will find plenty in all keys. And before you start playing on this, stop for a moment and reflect. If the track says 251 in C, ask yourself, what are the chords in this progression? Um, so 2 means 2nd degree, right? So 2nd degree from C is D. And I know from the magic table that the 2nd degree is minor 7. 5 means 5th degree. So 5th degree from C is G. And I know from the table that the 5th degree is the dominant 7 chord. So 2-5-1 in the key of C major is D minor 7, 2nd degree, to G7, 5th degree, to C major 7, 1st degree. Do this for as many keys as possible, and then the magic table will become as a second nature for you. Then, in the next lesson, we will explore more and very interesting possibilities.